Hi folks, I had an idea. We're gonna change up the way that we machine the Saunders Machine Works pallets. We make these as both a blank pallet for folks to use for their own fixturing, and we make them as kind of a pre-made mini fixture plate that goes on top of our fixture plates. And was there a way that I can machine a counter bore in the first op from the back side. And we figured it out using a custom tool from AB Tool. So I wanna walk through what that was like and then some of the tips in the Fusion 360 cam and show some speeds and feeds. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. When I started thinking about this, I realized a key seat cutter might work. It could plunge through this hole that measures 0.515 inches, but then it would have to have enough cutting diameter to machine this counter bore out to 0.77 inches with enough flute width, but also not having the shank interfere with this section here. And it's relatively long. We've got 0.9 inches on the shank alone, but I knew I was gonna want the tool to come all the way through the hole and machine truly from the bottom up. So I started thinking about where I could find this tool and I remembered that AB Tools, number one, does a lot of custom tools and also makes a number of different products like these sort of key seat cutters. So I went under products, key seat cutters, and I ended up on the small diameter solid carbide page. That listed what I thought was the right starting dimensions of just over half an inch. And there's a get PDF that I pulled up and sure enough, solid carbide C key cutters, five eighths inches smaller, all the specs that you could want. It's like, almost seems too good to be true. And then what's crazy, it was only $115. The closest tools that I had found, most of them had the wrong side of shank profile, and they were $80. Going from 80 for something that didn't really work to 115 for a totally custom diameter tool, awesome. So I initially asked for a cut diameter of 0.52 inches. I actually didn't really care about the cut width because we were going to be cutting from the bottom up and using this to clear a whole pocket. It wasn't as if I needed a specific groove diameter. Similarly, the radiuses on the top and the bottom were irrelevant. I actually didn't really care about the shank diameter either, but I figured it would probably be a half inch. What I did care about were the neck length and the neck diameter. I shot this over to them, I had the quote back the next day, and we ordered the tool, it arrived the next week, and then I had to figure out how to program it. And this actually threw me for a second. My initial go-to was bore. 2D bore, I've got my tool five selected, and I will pick that counter bore. What's great is you do get a toolpath right away, but we want to be able to see that toolpath better. So go up to inspect, section analysis, click on the front face of that part and then drag it back. And that gives us a live cam section view of the CAD model, which lets us see that toolpath do its trick. Now there's a couple problems with the default values uh, when we're doing a backside bore like this. The first is that it starts too high. The second problem is that bore never really stays in one place. It's always moving down, which means we wouldn't actually have a flat surface on the floor of this counter bore. But the bigger problem was the fact that it went top down. I couldn't figure out a way to flip bore over. So instead, we used a threading operation. It, by default, starts from the bottom up. This is how we need to program this part. Also, obviously benefits with chip evacuation and the ability to control the kind of axial depth of cut Although again, it's sort of weird because everything's upside down. Now we technically still have this problem. Uh, first off, it's cutting too far here, but it's also still not going to give us a flat floor on that counter bore. So I ended up breaking this up into a couple different operations. Knowing that we can probably consolidate this or improve it later, I, I just wanted to see if we get this tool working. The first change to the cam is we wanna reduce the top height by an offset. Now I hard coded the 0.1 inches. A different way to do that would be to use the formulas of negative flute length. Using the formula is nice because if we go in and edit the tool under the cutter, we can see this flute length of 0.1 inches. And so if we were to change that in the future, our cam will remain truly parametric relative to the tool parameters. Second change that we made to the threading cam was we added 50 thou radial stock to leave and that reduces the amount of material we're asking the tool to cut on the first pass. This is something we could consider getting more aggressive with, but it's also worth noting, making sure the tool is designed to actually cut with the top of the tool and not the bottom, and making sure that the cutting flutes extend close enough back to the shank before we do that. It's a good reminder when you're making a custom tool, explain the application because it can really help have a conversation about the correct grind and the correct relief. So to recap, we've got an initial threading operation, and then the full diameter threading operation. Now there's still a very small amount of material left along a taper on the floor of this 
or ceiling in, in this view, counter bore. Technically, bore isn't the right operation. We should be using a 2D contour, but I like the bore operation for one really important reason. Under the linking tab, lead to center. The bore toolpath just does a really good job at giving you one checkbox that confirms that this tool will always plunge in and out in exactly the center of the hole. And that is mission critical because if you don't lead in or lead out in the center of the hole, you will ruin this tool. There is just not much wiggle room around there. And I didn't want to have to mess with hand coding distances on linking moves. The lead to center just works great. I set the top height to that same negative 0.1 distance. And then we're only boring down three thousandths of an inch at a 0.003 pitch. They actually give us starting speeds and feeds on that PDF. I would consider this a relatively thin or weak neck cutter simply because it's a quarter inch that's sticking out about five to six times with a relatively large diameter. So you've got a little bit of tool pressure uh, down there and I just don't want chatter. It's also not the kind of operation where I'm really looking to shave seconds off of it. If this works and it gives us that feature done in op one, that's a big win. This just speaks to how crazy modern carbide tooling is. They're saying one to 3000 surface feet a 0.515 tool running at 1,000 surface feet, that's actually only 7,400 RPMs. 3,000 would be 22,000 RPMs, but there's still no reason to start that crazy. And the beauty of speeds and feeds on things like aluminum is they're very tolerant of starting at lower surface footages. I'd much rather find a recipe that works, doesn't have chatter, and then we can find out how and where we can push it, uh, then start with something that either breaks the tool or just doesn't work at all. It's also worth noting that as soon as you chatter into a tool, there's definitely a chance that you compromise the edge, which means the rest of your testing can be in vain. For video enjoyment, we're actually doing this as kind of a section view machining example. So first thing we're doing is using a 3 8 inch tool to bore out our hole. We're running that tool at 5,000 RPM or about 500 surface feet, 15 inches per minute or about 1,000th of an inch feet per tooth with a pitch of 40 thousandths of an inch. So where we ended up was running this tool at 200 surface feet. It's about 61 meters per minute or just under 1500 RPMs at 15 inches per minute. It's about 380 millimeters a minute with a 0 0.0033 or about 3.3 thousandths of an inch feed per tooth. That's 0 0.08 millimeters feed per tooth. And our kind of depth of cut in this case is driven by our thread pitch which we're running at 0.01 inches or 0.254 millimeter. And if you're new to machining or new to tools that are slightly less conventional, like a key seat cutter, these speeds and feeds might seem kind of strange. We have a really low surface footage. It's low in general, and it's even low relative to AV tools guidance, but we don't have a low feed per tooth. We actually have a pretty decent feed per tooth of about three and a half thousandths of an inch. And that's not an uncommon outcome. Many materials, especially aluminums, are quite tolerant of low RPMs, but you wanna let that tool cut. You wanna let it engage. If I wanted to push this tool harder, I would consider trying increasing the surface footage. What I would also try doing is adjusting that thread pitch because we could probably increase that thread pitch potentially as much as doubling it, which would have our cut time. But again, especially because this is a custom tool, and even though I was happy with the price, it's not an inexpensive tool. I'd much rather work my way up slowly uh, than compromise the tool or break it right off the bat. We were super happy with how this worked though. The tool ran and cut great. I thought it might be quite difficult to find the sweet spot uh, or get some good starting recipes, and really it wasn't that difficult at all. The surface finishes are great, and most importantly, being able to cut this counter bore from the back side eliminates a whole extra operation for us, which that's a huge win. When we ordered this tool from AB, I asked if they'd be willing to throw us even just some phone footage of how they make these tools. What's really cool about AB is they do these tools, not only custom, but really pretty quick turnaround times. So here is some footage showing their software in the simulation side, loading the carbide blank into the anchor grinder, touching off those wheel packs that do the carbide grinding and cranking these tools out. As always, folks, though, hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed, hope it gets those creative juices flowing around, uh, how to get the cam working the way you need it to, and the idea of custom toolings. Otherwise, take care. See you soon.